Good morning, everyone. Um, yeah, my name's Dave Barr. Um, Southwest Business Expo is one of the things that we do. Um, and bizarrely, um, Nigel asked me to come along and talk about um, exhibitions. Um, and um, I quite like the idea, as those of you know me, to be slightly controversial at times. Uh, and so the idea of exposing oneself to a room full of people is quite interesting. Um, so that's what we're going to talk about. Um, what is the time? Because I don't want to go over. OK. Um, so just really quickly, some of you won't know who the hell I am. And that's absolutely fine, but you will do by the end. Uh, started my first company whilst at university. We were creating uh, branded clothing for sports uh, clubs universities around the UK um, and then really since then I ended up venturing into the world of events um, not really planned um, but I quite like the idea of putting people in a room because the funny thing happens when you put people in the room they talk and it's the talking that we all are all about really at the end of the day and that's the kind of the core thing that for me is exhibitions and what they are about really um, doing, I've done quite a lot of exhibitions over the years now and um, in particular if I move on um, done seven exhibitions um, and over those seven exhibitions we had over a thousand exhibitors 12,000 delegates over the years um, 856 keynotes, 21 keynote speakers and 70 workshops and seminars and 24 live cookery demonstrations um, and all of those things are about getting people to talk they're a vehicle to get people to talk and that for me is what an exhibition is entirely all about um, uh, but none of that stuff happens without my amazing team um, who are all busy working back at the office whilst I'm swanning around up here. Well, that's what they say. Anyway. Um, and uh, it's with these guys that can make this happen. And as I kind of say that, there is no I in team. Um, it's not about me. It is about the people that I work with um, makes it happen. So um, oh, I've done it again, haven't I? There we go. I couldn't resist not doing something like that, really. I know it's a bit tacky, but I quite like that. Um, anyway, so uh, expose yourself to grow your business was the title. Um, and so I've broken that down into kind of four things, really. Why exhibitions? Um, plan, plan, and plan. Exhibition stats and how you can make it work for you. Um, so let's start with a little bit about why exhibitions. Wait a minute. Here we go. So why exhibitions? It's a bit like today come along here you know you're going to learn some cool stuff from everyone else apart from me um, you're going to meet new people and that's about growing your business isn't it you're going to expose yourself to these people um, it's about face-to-face -face marketing we've heard this morning haven't we about brand we've heard this morning about print right and the other bit of all of that that joins a lot of that stuff together is of course good old-fashioned face-to-face um, exhibitions are about research and development they are about testing your new product, your new service, on your target market. It is about showcasing those new products and services, demoing them so that people can see what they can do and how they can help them. It is also about networking, isn't it? And networking is one of those words that most people hate. Right? Because the vision of networking is you know, some guy in a grey suit with grey hair and a grey tie and a grey suit. Um, actually, it's not about that. It's about people. And it's about being talking to people and not judging whoever anyone is. Networking should be fun, but also serious and focused at the same time. Um, so it's also about building lasting relationships. Meeting someone face to face, looking them in the eye, is actually how you can build that trust with people. You get to see what makes them tick. You get to see in their eyes actually what it is that they do and how they can deliver it for your business. Um, that's the starting point. It's the first touch point. And so an exhibition is exactly that. It is exactly the first point of the sales process. It is the bit where you can meet and greet. Is it not working well? Hello? Hello? Is that better? Yeah. Sorry. Uh, so uh, it, it allows you to obviously be that first point of being able to start that sales process because you can have a decent conversation with people at an exhibition. Um, it allows you to listen to customer feedback. So if you are going to a business show to do one thing, and that is to test whether your product or your service meets the needs and requirements of people, you can find out from the people that you're talking to how that can benefit their business or not. 
Um, and it allows you to do that without necessarily going down the whole line of recreating everything else. Um, so it's a great way to do that. And finally, another point of an exhibition is it allows you to build a database. Now, I know we I used the term database with the dread of everyone talking about GDPR, or whatever it was called, right? Um, but the point is, and we've heard about how Daryl in particular hates spam emails. Um, and <laughs> But the point is that it's about a starting point. It, it allows you to be able to carry on and communicate with those people. And a database is incredibly valuable um, in 2019. Um, and that's certainly one of the things that we've focused on over the last 10 years, is building a database of contacts and connections. Um, and it's the same for you all. Um, so an exhibition is a whole number of different things. But the single most important thing for me is that it allows you, as an exhibitor, and that's the angle that I'm coming from today, to put your brand above everyone else. To allow you to be seen as the expert in the room. Right? Not just someone else who's walking the room, but actually you are the expert in this area, in this region, in your field, in that sector. And so that's what an exhibition can enable you to do. Um, and of course, by default, you're going to expose yourself, aren't you, to all sorts of different people. Now, um, so that's why, in particular, that we run business exhibitions. Because we al it allows people to engage and connect and grow their businesses. It allows people to do the face-to-face -face stuff. It allows people to catch up and do all those other lovely things that networking is all about. Most importantly, it's about getting you to your new market. So said we run exhibitions because they work and not because we want to be an exhibition company it's never what we set out to do yeah, I'm sure in the same way as like Daryl was explaining um, you know we want to just help people and we want to help people connect so um, plan plan and plan how many times have we all heard that how many times have we all talked about that we should be planning things more but actually we never really do it properly and like any other marketing platform or process or system that you're going to use, you need to do your research. You need to understand what opportunities are out there for, for you to go and exhibit at. You need to go and understand if you're looking for a particular niche market or if you're looking for a regional event or whatever it might well be that gets you to your target market. So you need to choose and you need to go out there and look. There seems to have been a bit of a... Bit, uh, of a um, kind of a phoenix of the flames really from exhibitions across the whole broad spectrum of shows um, there are a lot going on around the whole of the UK um, and a lot of them are really relevant to all sorts of different sectors and businesses and so it's worth spending some time and looking out there but the one thing that they all have in common they're full of people and none of you know some in some of those cases that actually they are relevant to your business but you've never looked at it in that particular way so do your research and uh, to find the right exhibition. Um, one of the things that's quite interesting is that, and we hear quite a lot, is that um, it's about the track record. What has a business or what has an exhibition done in the past? Um, we took the stance when we first started in the exhibition world that what we would do is we'd be very open and honest about who has come to the show and who has exhibited in the past. Um, and in particular, if you go onto our website, you can go back all the way to 2012 and you can see the name of every company that has ever come to the show or has ever exhibited at our show. There aren't many others that do that, which is interesting. Um, there are lots of figures that are branded about. But talk to the organisers of the show. Right? The number of times, and this will happen across all sorts of different things, that someone will go and come on our website and they'll fill in an inquiry form. I'd really like to find a little bit more about your show. Right? Our first thing is we will pick up the phone because we like to talk to people, right? And miraculously, they're suddenly not there. What's that about? They don't want to talk to you. Now, the thing is that we don't want people to come to our show who aren't relevant. We're not interested in selling something that's not going to work for them, but we want to understand about their business. And yet people don't do that. People hide behind stuff. But actually just talk to people. 
because the only way you're going to learn is the only way you're going to learn if it's the right thing for you to do. Um, so, you know, engage with the company. Have a look at who's exhibited before. Have a look if they're relevant to you, if they're your competitors. If your competitors are there, why aren't you there? There must be a reason for that. If no one there, maybe it's an untapped market. Maybe it's a new way of doing things. So look at what they've done in the past. <coughs> look at the costs. Well, we always talk about the costs, don't we? Um, exhibitions are typically known to being expensive in people's minds. Um, but actually, when you break them all down as a route to market, they're very, very cost effective. Having said all of that, you still need to make sure that you can budget for it. Um, and it isn't always about having the most expensive stand in the room. You know, it's about sometimes just having the presence. But more importantly, it's about making sure that you've got the staff and the time and the marketing materials that all go with that. Because one of the tough challenges of exhibitions is you have two seconds to be able to gain the attention of that attendee that's walking past your stand. That's not very long. So if you rock up with nothing, or some horrible marketing, or you know, with your back to everyone, they're gonna move on and go on. So make sure you are planned and prepared. And it's simple to do that, but it just takes a little bit of time and a bit of organizing, a bit of planning. Um, and then at least you know what the whole cost is gonna be both including staff and time, and that gives you a focus, because it gives you a focus on what you should be getting from the show. It is not, as often is the case, seen as a bit of a jolly. Ah, oh, right, we're at the office for the day. Hey, <laughs> You know, a few bacon sandwiches, lots of cups of coffee, you know, stand around looking busy. Um, you know, <coughs> it's actually a serious business, because you're there promoting and representing your business. Um, so look at that. Look at what the exhibition is doing to promote the show number of times than I've been to exhibitions because we go to exhibitions ourselves to exhibit and you go oh I didn't know they were doing that or I got the impression that there was more than this or there was less than this or whatever it might well be you know have a look at what they're doing because that's relevant as well in terms of that and then also piggyback off it it's okay it's a bit like today it's okay to tell people you're here it's okay to tell people that you've come out of your business and you've come along to learn stuff. It's okay. Because guess what it is? It's a bit of free marketing. It's you talking about the fact that you're doing something. And it's the same with the show, right? It doesn't matter what show you go to, right? Tell people you're there. It's a crazy idea, right? But the point is that people, other people will look at that. There'll be other people who don't know you're there who then see you're there. There'll be other people who've never heard of you who then will start to look at you and go, actually, they might be worth talking to. So piggyback off what an exhibition company's doing. Send them your news. Tell them what you're looking for. If you don't tell them, they can't help you, can they? Um, look at their exhibition stats. Find out what's happened. Find out the demographic of the people going. More often than not, the only way you can do that is, guess what? You've got to talk to them. Right? But they don't bite, most of them. Some of them have some young... Uh, quite aggressive salespeople, but they don't bite. Uh, so, you know, find out about that. Obviously, look at the previous exhibitors. Look at the attendees that are going. Again, it's the same thing. It's linked to the stats, but see who's gone in the past. See if the numbers stack up to what they say. We went to a business show last year, and we turned up, and we were, we were there setting up. There was a company opposite us, and they turned up with a full rig. Massive setup all boxed and they arrived and uh, we're like oh you didn't expect this show to be like this did you and the guy goes no we thought this show was a proper big event not a tabletop affair and they've got a full five meter by three meter stand that goes up and lights and power and all sorts of cool stuff because they assumed that that's what the show was all about all right so you know make sure that you understand that that's the right market that you're going for because what you don't want to do is look like the lemon in the room as well yeah? who hasn't done their research because no one will want to come and talk to you so yeah it really is important to understand who goes because then you know it's relevant because guess what it is not my fault if your target market is not at my show right or any other exhibitor right it's not my fault that's because you haven't done your research. You haven't asked those questions. Because that's when people turn around and say, oh, exhibitions are expensive, aren't they? Ooh. 
Ooh, you know, yeah, I suppose they are. You know, um, you know, compared to maybe some print advertising in a magazine where you won't meet anyone. But for the same amount of money, you could meet six, seven, eight hundred people. It's about the people thing. So, but understand it, and understand that they are an investment. We've now got exhibitors who are in their sixth or seventh year of exhibiting with us. I can only assume that it's because it works. Not because they've just got nothing better to do and they've got some money they need to get rid of. <laughs> they could be scared of Annabelle. Um, <laughs> I hadn't thought about that. Um, but the point is that they're there every year, aren't they? We've got people now who tell us that it's part of their annual budget to be there. They want to be seen in the room. They want to be seen as the expert, experts in that room. They want to be seen as that trusted brand in the room. It's that regularity within it. And there are a number of you in this room as well um, who have done that. Um, so really make sure that you plan. Because if you don't plan, it's not going to work. And remember also, most importantly with this, is that you got one shot. You have six hours or seven hours or two days or one day, whatever it is, however long the show is, right? There is no room for making a mess of it. There is no room for going, oh, it's all right, it'll get better this afternoon or tomorrow will be a better day because we got it wrong today, right? You need to be on it from the start. You need to be there first. You also don't need to be that silly company that goes, oh, it's just starting to die down because it's last hour, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to break my stand down. Actually, that doesn't work. We've got some of our biggest business because we were the last people to leave a show. Not the first to go, the last to go. So, you know, think of it as a whole day event. Think of it as a major part of your marketing activity, but really focus on what you're going to go to. So, here's some interesting exhibition stats for you. Um, this is all industry standard stuff. Um, so, 46% of decision makers make a purchase decision whilst attending. It's quite interesting, isn't it? 92% of attendees come to see and learn about new products and new services. That stuff replicates with everything that we do. One of the things that we do in particular is we ask why the, the attendees are coming. And one of the top levels is to look for new products and services. So that's a key part. 70% of decision makers found at least one new supplier at the event. We had an interesting story about three months before the, our last show that we did. We had someone ring up and said, uh, well, we're, on, we're on a stand at your March show. And um, we were supporting one of our clients. And we picked up a contract of £150,000. We didn't even have a stand. We didn't actually have our branding there, but I was just there in the room. So the opportunities that these things happen, but you've got to be there. 76% of decision makers are asked for a price or a quotation at the show. Makes sense, doesn't it? If you're talking there and you're coming along to speak to you about what you do, you're going to go away if you're talking to the right person. They're going to ask the right questions with the, and want the right information. 50% of attendees are there for the first time. We see that, we often see that there's a big influx of new people all the time, first time at the show. Um, and so there's a real new opportunity. That's that new frontier, isn't it? Yeah. Lots of you do lots of networking. Lots of people in this room are regular old hats at networking. But actually what we want is the new blood. There are lots of new and exciting companies moving to all different areas of the UK. Lots of new companies starting up. Exhibitions are a great way to meet and greet those. Um, and of course, some participate in exhibitions to strengthen their relationships. It's about people. It's about trust, the stuff that Jonathan was talking about this morning. This is the starting point. I believe this is probably one of the best starting points for you as a business from marketing. I'm bound to say that. I run my own show. But it's the starting point of the sale where you get to meet and greet those people. So I think this plays a really big part for you in your decision-making process. So... Think about your marketing plan. Um, plan your message. Be consistent. Invite people to come and see you at the show. <gasps> Invite your prospects. Okay. Think about your marketing materials. What are you going to have on the stand? Think about your press and your PR. 
and follow up. Oh, everyone hates that word, follow up. Someone coming along after me to talk about, I think, uh, following up. So uh, I'm sure he'll have some light to shed on that. Um, but think about all of those things, okay? As part of your marketing strategy to make an exhibition work for your business, it is all of those key things. number of times I've seen companies turn up on the morning of the show with two lorry loads of stuff, looking at their stand going, I'm sure it's supposed to be bigger than this. Right, they haven't planned it. Uh, right, where we go? There we go. Attract visitors. Amaze people with your stand. We've all seen all sorts of crazy stuff from jugglers to magic acts to popcorn to uh, cash machines and all sorts, right? You've got to grab the attention of the other people in the room. You are competing with everyone else in this room. You are competing with every other exhibitor in that room for their attention. Be clever. Think about your giveaways and your competitions and tell people what you're doing before the show. If you're going to give away some plants at a show like Lisa would do, then tell people in advance. It's a good reason to come to the show, isn't it? Competitions attract visitors. We know that. You know that thing when you go down the high street and you're walking down the, um, down the street there and you see a load of people gathering around something. Right? And you go, Ooh, I wonder what's going on over there. Might just go and have a little look. Because right? you're curious. Well, guess what happens at exhibitions? If you've got a lot of people on your stand, unfortunately, your stand will get busier. If there's no one on your stand, it's going to be a bit quiet, right? So think about how you can engage people to come and stay and stick on your stand. The longer they are there, the bigger the chance you're actually going to be able to do something with them. Um, make it competitive, but make it easy enough for people to win. I was at a show uh, not so long ago, and they had the stick there doing a driving competition, right? Now, he set a lap record that no one had any chance of beating. It was so far ahead that no one bothered to enter. So make it realistic, okay? <coughs> but also remember that everyone is a winner. It's not just about the winner. Ring everyone up and tell them, or find them, or talk to them about it. Um, giveaways talked about branded stuff this morning we talked about print with Dow as well and obviously Dow likes his mugs um, you know but there are lots of different things you can give away think about the environment we end up throwing away far too much stuff from our show where people are just printing far too much and just leaving it um, we're really quite conscious about that but think about and just think about what you could do that's different be creative <coughs> it's not always about a mug or a pen you know with the greatest respect I like mugs and pens you know, um, but not everyone wants a mug or a pen right? think about what's useful to your target market and how you can keep in front of them that's the thing you do about. and obviously high quality items talked about high quality print it's exactly the same with the expo you know one of the jokes that we have when we're running our show I, I said whatever you do whatever you do on the morning of the show don't stop at your local spa other good brands are around of course and pick up a bottle of cheap nasty plonk and put it on the stand and go, hey, put your business card in there and you're going to win this lovely bottle. Right? If that's how much you value your, your business card lead or that opportunity to talk to someone at 3 99 I'd be offended, um, as I'm sure you would agree you would be offended. So think about what it is that you're going to give away. Technology, we all love a bit of technology, even if you don't like technology. Annabelle hates technology in the office, but she's still drawn to it, it shows. Um, you know, be creative about what you can be doing. We've seen everything from 3D printers to cars um, and all sorts. Obviously, you have games and simulators and drones and all that kind of stuff. But, you know, if you've got a client that does something interesting and exciting and sexy, ask them to come along. Put them on your stand. What great gimmick is that? Okay, it's also a good advocate for your business. Um, so consider what you can do on your stand. It's not about just rocking up with a roller banner and smiling. Follow up. Oh, I love the follow up thing. So let you into a little secret about one of the things that I do. Um, at our exhibition, I spend quite a lot of time walking around. I do quite a lot of steps, typically. Um, and I have a set of business cards in my pocket. I don't actually have my name on it, but they have my email address on it. And I go round and I put them in the various prize drawers around the show. Why do I do that? Not because I want to win. But I want to see if anyone actually follows up. No one ever follows up. Ever, ever, ever follows up. I've never been rung. Yet. 
and it does have my mobile number on, so it's not even recognizable for my business, and I don't give up my mobile number very often. So um, the most important thing to do, it's no different to being here today. If you meet someone today, and you think, oh, there could be an opportunity there, follow them up, give them a call, talk to them. Don't send them an email, give them a call. It's exactly the same with an exhibition. We had someone this year who met 600 people on their stand at their show. They have now rung every single one of them. Right? That's exactly what you've got to do because that's about turning that day at the show into future opportunity. Right? Don't leave it long. You know, do it the following week whilst it's fresh in their minds, whilst they're also still excited about the buzziness and all the opportunities they've met at the show. Right? Pick up on that. Don't leave it. If you leave it, it's dead. Forget it. Might as well chuck it all in the bin and carry on look at something else. Um, so follow up is absolutely key. Um, so start early. Have a plan of attack. If necessary, delegate it to someone else to do. Okay. Put your connections that you've met into your CRM system or whatever it is. Thank you very much. Um, and you know uh, so that you can actually carry on that e follow up with them as well. Um, share and follow with and connect with them on social media. There's a crazy thought, isn't there? You know, um, it's okay to go and connect with them on LinkedIn. It's okay to follow them on Twitter. Right? It's okay to send them a message. Say, great to meet you. <coughs> okay, um, and plan to see what everyone should see and what everyone can do. But also, most importantly, think about the ideas. You know, look at the notes that you've made at the show when speaking to people. I always write little notes on the business cards when I meet people, so I know exactly what it is I need to do when I get back because unfortunately I've realised I'm getting older and now I can't remember the stuff I used to remember so I'm having to write it down. Um, and, but it's, it's really invaluable um, just to go through that because afterwards if you've got to see a business card it's quite difficult to remember who is who and what's what. Um, so make sure you do that. But have a little checklist. Have a checklist of what you do. But that checklist can apply to networking events and everything else that you do from promoting your business. Um, finally, if it's going to move, is it going to move? There we go. Um, hopefully that gives you a bit of a flavour about how you can expose yourself to business, how you can increase your brand's exposure to more people, um, and how shows like this and many others that are around the South West and the UK can benefit your business.